The story I'm about to tell you today is one of the most fascinating, disturbing internet impossibilities I've ever seen. I jumped in. I know, I heard. I'm I, so happy I taught you what they were. This is my name. Yours. yours is so cool. I love the red heart sunglasses. I love The thing that you should be asking yourself throughout this video is when does the amount of circumstantial evidence become substantial enough to count as proof? So with that being said, let's say hypothetically that one day a group of people that grew up around super edgy internet humor decided that they wanted to get in the NFT game. It wasn't just for fun for me. I was thinking like, okay, I want to make my mark on the world a little bit. And I want to- Instead of creating a normal project, they wanted to create something that made fun of the very people that would buy it. Yeah. You guys have really inspired yeah. us. I appreciate yeah. everything yeah. you guys have yeah. done. Thank it's awesome. Awesome. it's awesome. awesome to just sit down. It's the best part of the podcast. Yeah. Awesome. They were going to create a 10,000 unit uniquely designed art project that was one huge racist anti-Semitic inside joke that could be consumed by the masses, but only understood by a select few. In other words, an esoteric masterpiece. And let's say, hypothetically, that they achieved this by using hidden imagery, deliberate names, and ciphers as tools to hide the true meaning of these JPEG images. JPEG images that now go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. We wanted to be known as the founders who worked our asses off, and that's yeah. what we tried. Well, in that case, hypothetically, Bald Ape Yacht Club would be the biggest troll in the history of the internet. But the real question is, is this hypothetical a reality? The project obviously has so much hype and so much support. There's also been criticism. Some people connected some of the in images to racist tropes. Um, I'd love to give you the opportunity to respond to that criticism. Life is out of dice roll, pay my debt tenfold, stomp your ass out. Pants on Kenna Cole, stomp your ass out. Then call J. Cole, man. This is way cold, man. This that eight flow, man. No my eight level up, need like eight more, man. I don't hate no man, I don't chase no man. 2.5, my car no 4.5, slow dance. And my pockets rose and my music choke slams. And my trophies hold hands. Don't confuse it with some tan. Gone uncut, cut, 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 cut. Y'all looking s there are thousands of black people who are offended by this shit. They don't apologize to them. They double down. Regardless of what you think their intention are, what their actions today speak volumes in terms of their egregious desire to affect. Non-fungible token. They're NFTs, right? Aboard Ape Yacht Club. Three to five billion dollars was the valuation of Bored Ape Yacht Club at its peak popularity. Three to five billion US dollars for what a lot of people called useless garbage. Three to five billion dollars worth of monkey drawings. Some people call it innovative, the art of the future. Other people call it ugly unimaginative doodles. But over the past year, people have been calling it a racist joke. A three to five billion dollar 4chan troll. BAYC is an NFT project made up of 10,000 generated images of apes with various traits and characteristics that just so happen to sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars on OpenSea. Some of you may have heard about the recent controversy surrounding it, but today I want to take a more critical look at the situation and analyse both sides of the story, as quite a lot has happened since everything reached a boiling point. But before that, let's take a peek behind the curtain. This is Bored Ape number 6969. I know right, classic funny number, but let's not get too hung up on that. Instead, let's look a little closer at the actual ape itself. Prussian helmet, huge grin, and an orange jumpsuit. Besides the reference to war, not too much to see here, at least on the surface. 
Located on the prison jumpsuit is the number 019807. If we use a technique called null padding on this number, which is essentially taking out all of the zeros, we are left with the year 1987. In the year 1987, a man named Rudolf Hess, who was a leading member of the Nazi party, was the last prisoner to die in Spanadu prison, a well-known establishment for holding many Nazi leaders. After Rudolf died, the prison was destroyed out of fear of it becoming a Nazi shrine. Okay, so that's quite a strange coincidence, I guess, but what does that realistically prove? Well, at the moment, absolutely nothing. I've just told you three facts that essentially don't mean anything. But by the end of this video, you could look back at this piece of information through a completely new lens, and you will likely come to one of two conclusions. One, the founders have set up Bored Ape Yacht Club in a way where they can use plausible deniability on every small detail they hid in their project that proves it being a huge racist troll. Or two, everything that I'm about to show you in the following runtime of this video is a coincidence. As I said, Bored Ape number 6969 is a small piece of evidence in the grand scheme of this insane investigation. And if it didn't get your mind questioning the legitimacy of this project, then don't worry. There's still a lot of context we need to fill you in on in order to even consider someone would intentionally do something this niche, combining sex numbers, war references, and Nazi undertones. So let me fill you in on a little backstory. On the 19th of June, 2022, a YouTuber called Fillion uploaded a video called Bored Ape Nazi Club to his YouTube channel. It was an hour long video about all the evidence he and a man called Ryder Rips had found connecting the imagery, names and ciphers used in the Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT project to racist 4chan culture and Nazi imagery. The video was viewed over 1.7 million times and it forced the creators of the Bored Ape Yacht Club to respond to a lot of the points, but not all of them. I am going to take what I believe to be the most damning points against Bored Ape Yacht Club and show you their response to those points, so you can get both sides of the story and create your own conclusion. The fact is, there's a reason a lot of people can't wrap their heads around four guys going through all this effort just to point and laugh at people to such an extreme degree. Why put so much effort into something that deep down just started off as a joke? For the masses to understand why something like this could happen, we need to establish a motive. And to understand that motive, you must first understand a little bit about 4chan, because it's a very important part of this puzzle. 4chan is essentially an old internet forum page that over the years has developed its own language and culture. Some of this deep 4chan culture could be considered extremely offensive, edgy, racist, etc. Words and phrases are created or reinterpreted that only avid users of the site would understand. And trolling is a huge part of the culture. In 2012, Taylor Swift hosted a Facebook poll that allowed people to vote for what school should win a private concert. This caused a huge brigade of 4chan users to all vote for the Horace Mann School in Boston, Massachusetts. Why? Because it's a school for the deaf. Cutting for Bieber was a hashtag started by 4chan members when images of Justin smoking weed was leaked to the public. 4chan users used this hashtag to show pictures of people cutting themselves to trick the mainstream media into thinking that people were actually self-harming over Justin Bieber smoking weed. And of course, it worked. In fact, there are so many times 4chan has tricked the mainstream media into believing something that is completely fabricated. The alt-right pipeline is something that young people can experience when venturing into certain parts of the internet and 4chan was one of the easiest ways to get sucked into it. When the content you intake is extremely one-sided and lacks other perspectives, it's easy to not question the evidence you're being given. 
Due to certain parts of 4chan's obsession with Hitler and philosophers that justified his actions, it's no wonder why there are now groups of once naive internet dwellers that have extreme racist views. What 4chan culture really creates is an open door for a lot of inside jokes. Jokes that only deep members of certain parts of 4chan will understand. It's a way for these people to feel like they are more intelligent than those around them. And Bored Ape Yacht Club has allegedly used 4chan language all throughout their projects to create an NFT world that has roots in extreme Nazi imagery. Or like I said, maybe all the evidence I'm about to show you is just one big coincidence. So theoretically, the motive of BAYC is to essentially troll who the creators would likely call normies and the mainstream media into buying something that has extreme racist messaging to essentially outsmart them. And if that is the case, if that turns out to be true, then it has worked absolutely flawlessly. These commodities, if you can even call them that. Dude, board apes are more than just an image, okay? They're a Listen, I, I'm not even a huge hater of NFTs. I actually think- Cannot believe you wasted everything that we earn on a couple images of a monkey. You just, you just don't understand it, okay? Let me tell you about the founders. The utility was going to be this like collaborative art piece that everybody in the community was going to be able to do together um, because they were so inspired by this like art idea. And so they called me with like, hey, we're going to do this thing and like, you know, just explaining the idea. And I kind of giggled and was like, oh, yeah, I mean, but people are just going to draw penises. We hung up, but like the stupid thing that I said that I never would have thought about, right. transformed into where do people draw penises? And, you know, it turned into, well, it's a bathroom. Right. You know, it's a toilet stall. And it's a dive bar. Mm -hmm. And, but it's not a dive bar. It's a yacht club that's a dive bar. But it's in a swamp. For those who have followed BAYC for a long time and still believe it's truly just random in its design, structure, story, and message, let me point you to a direct quote from an interview that Gargamel did, who is one of the founders of Bored Ape Yacht Club. We didn't want to just throw 3D glasses onto apes, and we didn't have a long essay on what exactly this was, but we knew what it was. It's like Wittgenstein's let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably, or Hemingway's iceberg theory. We knew all about what this world was, and why these apes are this way, and that someone else might get a little tingle on their neck looking at it, thinking, yeah, this is kind of different. This isn't just random. That interview confirms that Bored Ape Yacht Club has a deeper meaning than just a bunch of monkeys drawing dicks in a dive bar's bathroom. But that's not everything this quote is hiding. Here, Gargamel quotes Ludwig Wittgenstein with the phrase, let the unutterable be conveyed unutterably. Wittgenstein was an Austrian Jewish philosopher who allegedly went to school with Adolf Hitler and was possibly even mentioned in Mein Kampf. Also, Wittgenstein's body of work is full of puzzles and ciphers, a lot like Bored Ape Yacht Club, as you will see later on. Speaking of the creators, I'd like to start by talking about each one of them individually. And since we already mentioned him, let's start with Gargamel, aka Greg Solano. He is one of the two creative writers who founded Bored Ape Yacht Club. And Gargamel just so happens to be the only founder that we can confirm at least is aware of 4chan because he posted a 4chan meme about crypto on the official Bored Ape Yacht Club Reddit account before the actual Bored Ape Yacht Club projects launched. Another interesting fact about Gargamel is he wrote his thesis paper on the book 2666, which tells a fictitious story set in Nazi Germany with the main protagonist based on a real Nazi doctor, Hans Reiter. At its core, 2666 is a book that blends fiction and real-world events, 
and it just so happens that in a deleted blog post, Gargamel expresses his desire to create a fiction story that blends real events with fabricated ones. The founders did address these points in their blog post. Gargamel works as a book editor for many years. It's been our job to think deeply about narrative stuff like Hemingway's Iceberg Theory and Wittgenstein. Also, yes, Gaga wrote his senior thesis on Roberto Bolano, one of the most famous and celebrated Latin American authors of the last 50 years, who is beloved in literary circles. I think Gargamel is the member who gives us the most info and confirmation that Bored Ape Yacht Club is more than what it seems on the surface, especially when you consider that undeniable quote from an old interview. Gordon Gonner, aka Wiley Aronow, is the second creative writer on the Bored Ape Yacht Club project, and is also the most well known. In a 2014 interview, Gordon was asked about the books he doesn't like. He answered with, Mein Kampf, and then he went on to explain how he actually hasn't read it, and he only said it because he doesn't mind badmouthing Hitler. It seems like a really out of place response for an innocent question, and it's just another small example of one of the founders having what seems to be a strange draw to Nazi Germany. Emperor Tomato Ketchup, aka Kareem Attale, and Sass, aka Zenshin Ali, are the other two founders of Bored Ape Yacht Club, and their role description is software engineers. This seems like a good time to put into question the founder's digital names. When you split SAS into two, you get SASS, -S, which just so happens to be the two main Nazi military divisions. The founders claim that SAS got the pseudonym because Gordon can get very sassy in the mornings with him, and it became an inside joke. Emperor Tomato Ketchup is the name of a 1971 Japanese film that is banned across the world because it contains CP. The film is about children who overthrow adults to establish their own empire, and in one of the scenes that got the film banned, a child in a fascist uniform essays a grown woman. The founders claim Emperor Tomato Ketchup got his name from a Stereo Lab album. They justify this by saying, it's a good record. It was ranked 51st on Pitchfork's list of the 90s best albums. Tomato has been an avid vinyl collector for many years and thought the name was funny. It's important to note that the band Stereo Lab got the album name from the band movie. The real question comes down to if Tomato knew that. Gordon Goner is a direct anagram for Drongo Negro. Drongo is Australian slang for dumb, and Negro is Spanish for black. Also, Drongo just so happens to be a term tossed around 4chan a fair bit. The founders claim that he got the name Goner from the fact that Gordon was sick and in and out of hospitals a lot over the past 10 years. Also, he thought that the name Gordon Goner sounded cool, like Joey Ramone. Gargamel is the name of a villain from the Smurfs, and is often cited as a racist depiction of a Jewish man. And of course, Gargamel is a term often used on 4chan to describe someone greedy. The founders say Garga chose his pseudonym because he's a massive fan of Starcraft, and he hates Smurfs, which is how you refer to people who cheat on the ladder system in the game. That's why his bio on the Bored Ape Yacht Club site was just Starcraft Obsessed Eats Smurfs. In addition, he found shortly before BAYC launched that his wife had never seen the show Smurfs, which he thought was crazy, so they started watching it back then. Plus, his friends always rip on him for being prematurely balding. Hidden meaning in names relating to this project doesn't just stop at the founders. It also carries over to the company that owns Bored Ape Yacht Club a company called Yuga Labs. To understand the possible hidden meaning in the name Yuga Labs, we must again go back to the culture of 4chan. September 11th, 2014. In a response to a comment on a thread about Gamergate, an anonymous user posted, I know it is dark at times, but you gotta learn to enjoy it, man. Embrace being the bad guy. Surf the Kali Yuga. The phrase Surf the Kali Yuga would then become widely adopted on 4chan, 
and then shortly after was picked up by the alt-right, who slapped it onto t-shirts and used the phrase to form a sense of collective. No longer did they need to say, I'm a white supremacist, because they can now just say that they're surfing the Kali Yuga, and no one will really bat an eye. This is how Yuga Labs explains the meaning behind their name. We're nerds, and Yuga is the name of a villain in Zelda who has the ability to turn himself and others into 2D art. It makes perfect sense for an NFT company. Gordon spent a decade practicing Hinduism, and the Kali Yuga is the current era we are in according to Hinduism. The ADL quite literally laughed at the suggestion that the term Kali Yuga had anything to do with white supremacy. This is a perfect example of how words or numbers could have vastly different meanings depending on if you know anything about 4chan culture. Obviously, the ADL would not think that the phrase Kali Yuga could have anything to do with white supremacy, but show that to an internet dweller from the mid-2010s and they could have a widely different perspective. If the founders did intend to use that word due to the connections to white supremacy, it just goes to show how well and meticulously they have thought this whole thing out. They will always have plausible deniability. In late 2020, crypto was started to be like more of a thing again in the mainstream, you know, public. And by January, kind of 2021, a project called Hashmask came out that caught our attention. It caught everybody's attention on crypto Twitter, basically, because it was like an art project that was getting published on Ethereum is what it was. It was like an NFT project that wasn't like a technical thing like CryptoKitties was. It wasn't like this weird generative thing like CryptoPunks was. It was just like a new medium for people to publish on. In the same way, it's like when podcasting opened up or like, you know, YouTube creators or anything else, it's like, holy shit, here's this new place to like put content out that you don't have to be like the most technically savvy person in the world to do it and if you understand the medium and all that like that's like a moment in time and so we just i saw hash mass and literally i texted him like hey let's make an nft one thing that the founders did not comment on was their mention of an nft project called hash masks that they paid homage to on their website hash masks was made by a company called some quick labs some quick is a latin phrase that means to each his or her own which translated into german means to each what they are due, which just so happens to be the text written on the Buchenwald death camp. Coincidentally, that concentration camp was also the same one that Hans Reiter conducted experiments in. The last name we need to talk about before we get into the imagery of the project actually doesn't have any hidden meaning behind it, and that name is Gaio Seri. He was the manager of Madonna, U2, and now the Bored Ape Yacht Club. But most importantly, he's likely the reason for the insane mainstream integration of BAYC. I mean, Snoop Dogg and Eminem rapping as their own Bored Apes at the VMA Awards doesn't just happen out of nowhere without someone on the inside. The main reason I'm bringing this up is because allegedly Gaio Seri had a call with Ryder Rips, who, like I said, is the man who found and published most of the information that you've heard in this video. The phone call allegedly lasted two hours, and apparently Gaio Seri was screaming at him to stop digging into the project. After Ryder Rips explained all of the evidence he had found to Oseri, he responded with, who am I to judge what art is? Oseri also allegedly said to Ryder Rips, My friends tell me you're a nice guy. Are you a nice guy? Because I can be a nice guy. And I can also be a not nice guy. Guy Oseri has not commented on these allegations, and neither has Yuga Labs. There is also no recording of the phone call. While we're on the topic of Ryder Rips, it's probably a good time to say that this guy knows his shit. He has been terminally online since the inception of 4chan, and basically everything else internet-wise. He is not just a nobody, and he seems pretty certain of what he's accusing BAYC of, which does actually hold some value. It doesn't mean you should blindly follow what he says, but you definitely shouldn't discount any points he's researched. He is a true internet historian. Anyway, some of you may not have reached the tipping point yet. There might not be enough information for you here to determine if Bored Ape Yacht Club is one big white supremacist joke just yet. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the imagery of the project. These people have like, they let 
the world tell me I'm crazy for pointing out the Kali Yuga. Meanwhile, Wiley Arno's Twitter account bio has the Kali Yuga in it. Don't even get me started on this founder bullshit. Dude, is this a joke? Did I actually hear that? The greedy, unimaginable. It's an investment, okay? Ever heard of it? Ever heard of putting your money into a Rolex or a Birkin bag? The number 1488 is a combination of numbers used by neo-Nazis to express their radical views without outright tattooing a swastika on their body. The number 14 stands for what Nazis call the 14 words, which are, we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. The 88 stands for Hail Hitler in alphanumeric code, something that the alt-right uses quite frequently. This is Bored Ape number 1488, and just like Bored Ape number 6969, this ape is also wearing the orange prison jumpsuit with the year 1987 on it. Coincidence or not, the founders did not comment on Bored Ape numbers 1488 or 6969. This is the official logo of Bored Ape Yacht Club, and this is the logo of the Totenkopf. Totenkopf is German for death's head or skull. During the Nazi era, Hitler's SS division adopted this particular Totenkopf image as a symbol. These are the two logos side by side and overlaid. It's also important to note that the skull on the Totenkopf is the same one used in all of the Surf de Kali Yuga merchandise that was made after it became a popular term coined on 4chan. On top of that, the amount of teeth depicted in the ape skull on the BAYC logo is 18, which in alphanumeric code equals AH, the initials of Adolf Hitler. The Totenkopf skull also has 18 teeth in its logo. This is the point the founders focused on the most to debunk as it became the most popular and widespread evidence across social media. Essentially, their argument boils down to them claiming the inspiration came from punk culture, streetwear, and old yacht club flags, not 4chan. To back up their claims, they presented screenshots of Gordon's emails that showed us numerous reference images before the BAYC logo was finalized. However, some of the alleged references to war are a lot less hidden than others. For example, other traits that these apes can have are Prussian helmets, a fez, a commie hat, a Vietnam era helmet, and a safari hat that resembles a European piff hat. There's also a sushi chef headband trait that is usually called a hachimaki. There are six common variations of these headbands and it just so happens that the variation Bored Ape Yacht Club used was the one that translates to Divine Wind or Kamikaze, clearly being a reference to Japanese suicide bombers. This was also something the founders did not bother to comment on. Ape hands are another piece of racist imagery that BAYC has allegedly scattered throughout its promotion and projects. The racist connotations of ape hands goes back all the way to the late 1800s, when Belgium's leader, King Leopold II, cut off the people of Congolese's hands due to them not working hard enough to create rubber. Here is one of BAYC's Rolling Stones covers, with an ape hand in the corner, and here are some images of a spin-off project, Bored Ape Yacht Club created with Yuga Labs. This project was called Bored Ape Kennel Club, and as you can see, the dogs are holding ape hands in their mouths. The Boogaloo Boys are a group of people formed through 4chan that use Hawaiian shirts and words like Big Luau and Big Igloo as ways to hide their beliefs without being censored, sort of like what the alt-right adopted with alphanumeric code. While most Boogaloo Boys are mainly just extreme gun rights activists and anti-law enforcement, there are some who do believe in white supremacy. As you may have probably already guessed, the Hawaiian shirt is yet another trait in the BAYC collection, and it makes a prominent appearance on the main protagonist in Bored Ape Yacht Club's Other Side reveal trailer. Another interesting thing about Other Side is it launched on the same date as Bored Ape Yacht Club, April 30th, which is also the day Hitler died. The founders did claim that Bored Ape Yacht Club did not launch on April 30th, and in fact, the Wall Street Journal got the date wrong. However, they never did address Other Side also launching on April 30th. 
that they lied about. They said, oh, the April 30th date is something the writer got wrong. The writer didn't get that wrong. I reached out to the writer. The writer, there was fact checked. And they had plenty of time to correct that if that was something that they that was wrong. And then meanwhile, they also picked April 30th as the date of the other side. So they're doubling down on their lies. And that, in my opinion, is the main imagery that connects BAYC to racist 4chan culture and racist history. But I still haven't shown you a very important podcast clip, and I also haven't talked about the puzzle. On the 13th of September, 2021, at 8.55pm, a tweet was made by the Bored Ape Yacht Club Twitter account. The caption reads, Somebody left a strange note at the bar. Underneath is an image of a napkin with the words, Come find me below, semicolon, U8 JJ6. This would be the start of a $100,000 scavenger hunt. If we take the code on the napkin and type out every letter underneath each character on a keyboard, we get the phrase, slash Jimmy. Searching boardapeyachtclub.com slash Jimmy brings you to this webpage. From here, you can enter the clubhouse. Throughout every different room, there are puzzles for you to solve. Some are straightforward, and some are insanely difficult. After all of the codes are deciphered, you are left with five answers. Aperol, Australopithecus, Bingo, Guanon, and Macaque. As you have probably guessed by now, some of these names have possible double meanings. Australopithecus was discovered by a man named Ludwig Kohl Larsen, who in 1931 joined the Nazi party and later would go on an exhibition to East Africa in search of primitive man. From 1938 to 1939, he discovered Australopithecus. Ludwig would then attempt to prove that all people have a common origin, but that African people remained in the state of primitive man. Guanon is a type of monkey and is also the last name of René Guanon, who is a memed philosopher on 4chan. He was also given credit for bringing the Kali Yuga to the West. I'm sure you can now see why he's a prominent figure on 4chan. This clue also carries on the string of connections BAYC has with the phrase Kali Yuga. Macaque, like Guanon, is also a type of monkey, and it's also a racial slur. The other two words, Aperol and Bingo, have extremely stretched second meanings that frankly don't even make sense. Anyway, that's the puzzle that BAYC crafted, and that also concludes the evidence against BAYC. Evidence that you still may not even understand. But so far, this video has been very one-sided, so I would like to take a closer look into who exactly strung this entire conspiracy together in the first place, and see why that person is being sued by Yuga Labs. Any normal company would say, those two logos, Holy shit, they kind of do look alike. A lot of people see these logos and they see them looking alike. Let's just change it. What what artistic, there's no artistic. Listen, I mean, who am I to judge what art is? I never it Looks like if someone gave Stephen Hawking a secondhand pit amount of ugly by the fucking ape. By now, in your mind, the tipping point might have already happened. However, I urge you not to be set on any decision just yet, because this is the part where the video switches gears and re-aims its sights onto the opposing side. More specifically, Ryder Rips, the person who found the majority of the information against Bored Ape Yacht Club and the person that Yuga Labs is suing. But not for the reason you might think. Yuga Labs is not suing Ryder Rips for slander, defamation, or anything along that line, but instead suing him for trademark infringement. But why? Well, a clip from the Nelk podcast might be able to give us some insight. When you're as big as you guys are, 
Yeah. yeah. People are going to so use your a name. target on your back. Right. It's, it's right. also just like that's the guy's a grifter, right? The guy's made like millions of dollars. Like that's the thing yeah. that like once people like understand, it's like, oh wait, he's made millions of dollars off this grift. Yeah. Like he's like, he's incentivized to spread a conspiracy. It's basically like hey, a wait, market. How did he, how did he how make, money? make the money? Because he creates knockoff NFTs. That's what he did for crypto punks and created crypto funks. And he would board API oh, club. So and he he's the his, scammer. He's a scammer. It's the, that's all it is. It's like the guy's literally, he brags about it. He's bragged about making millions of dollars off this shit. Right, and it's like you can go into you can find image like uh, screenshots on his Discord, yeah. where he like talks about he's he like oh he wants us to sue him, and it's because it's, it's like going to increase his cloud or whatever. It's all like fucking nonsense. In the clip, Golden and Gargamel accuse Ryder Rips's motivation for starting these rumors, essentially coming down to profiting off of their brand. But how did Ryder Rips do that? Well, this is where things start to get interesting. Along with the influx of evidence he bought against BAYC, tying them to Nazi imagery, was an accompanying NFT project of his own. Ryder Rips re-minted every single Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT for his own project, RRBAYC. It was a replica of the original BAYC project with a slightly different name. This project was then promoted heavily at the end of Fillion's video. Yuga Labs is not suing him for using the apes, but actually for using the name BAYC in the title of the project. The whole lawsuit seems to be a mess with no end in sight. In fact, it is still being settled to this day, and Ryder Rips does not plan on losing any time soon. But just how much money did Ryder Rips make from this stunt? Well, it's very difficult to tell. At some points, he was minting each ape for 0.1 ETH, or around 300 US dollars per NFT at the time. And then he raised the price to 0.15 ETH, which was around 450 USD. He claimed that this price change was to reward early adopters. Given that there were 9,999 of these things minted on the blockchain, we can estimate that this project garnered anywhere between 2 million and 4.5 million dollars. This figure is without taking into consideration all the gas fees and expenses of the project, but even if Rips retained 30% of that money, it's still an absurd amount of wealth to accrue for something that, quote, uses satire and appropriation to protest and educate people. It's not too much of a surprise that this fake NFT project did not succeed in bringing down BAYC's overall value. However, it did increase Ryder's online presence and bank account, intentionally or not. So while we established an ambiguous motive of why the founders of BAYC might try to troll the world with an NFT project, we have arguably established a more clear-cut motive for why someone might want to spread misinformation about that NFT project. A motive that is understood by millions. Money. And while Ryder Rips denies that this stunt was a cash grab, it's more than fair to be skeptical, because Ryder Rips has managed to monetize the very conspiracy theory that he crafted. And that fact alone really does make you think. There's also the degree to which you might have done the RRBAYC collection differently. Do you regret how you launched that? Because it looks like you, it was a cash grab. Why does it look like that? Because of the timing, because of the, the noise around when you launched it and how you launched it. Um, Did I launch it? You launched it during NFT NYC. But there was a no, lot of noise around Apefest. No, I didn't. When you launch it, you're still writing off that brand name. No, it wasn't planned. RRBAYC wasn't a planned project. Period. Okay, now the tipping point might start to balance back out again at least for you watching this video. But for the majority of the world, there is no tipping point. Most people's opinions on Bored Ape Yacht Club are not formed by information and conspiratorial theories. Most people's opinions on BAYC are formed from their already established perspectives and biases on NFTs, or maybe from their favorite celebrity. I got an ape too because I saw you on the show with people and you said you got a moon pay, so I went and I copied you and did the same thing. You did? Mm hmm. This is your, this That's is your ape. Yeah. You debut. It's really cool. The hat, the shades. And the beauty of the board apes is what I love about it, which made me want to support it and get fully behind it, is that it's multicultural. 
It's people of all walks of life. It's like a love fest. It's no racism. It's no patriotism. It's just love. It's just appreciation and it's acceptance for your art and your creative value that you bring to the table. And Much like Philly and for Ryder Rips, celebrities became the big marketing campaign for Bored Ape Yacht Club. And it's the main reason for their huge success. It's one of the big reasons they were valued at $5 billion. And it's a huge aspect of what makes this story so interesting. All the celebrities that are flashing on the screen right now are celebrities that owned a Bored Ape. Have all these people been fooled into buying an overwhelmingly expensive racist JPEG image? Is it just like every other piece of lucrative art? Merely an investment? Or a sketchy illegal sponsorship? <coughs> uh, allegedly. I've not aborted. Oh, if you are aborted, no, I fucking don't. And there's an NDA they kind of send my like, each agent and shit to. They wanted you to not disclose that they had purchased the agent. But they're actually asking you to commit fraud on their behalf. BAYC became a culture within itself, a lifestyle that crypto bros needed to have cringy collaborations, and a bubble waiting to burst. And when that hype did die down, people stopped questioning and looking in to this insane rabbit hole. Bored Ape Yacht Club did not fail because of Ryder Rips and Fillion's conspiracy theory, but it failed due to a technology that was not ready for the mainstream and a half-baked idea with flashy marketing that eventually grew old. However, Despite their insane decline and massive loss for investors, Bored Apes still sell for over $100,000 every single day on OpenSea. I mean, me personally, from my advice, you know, I've, I've been in this business for a very long time, worked with a lot of different people. Including, it'll go away. It'll yeah. go away. Don't bring, give it attention. My personal advice. Okay. Keep fucking building. Keep winning. The sir. best way to shut up a yeah. fucking yeah. Hitter, right? Just, no, just win. keep winning, just winning. Win. You know, and I think you guys stay focused. That guy just wants to be a distraction. He wants to see you guys come down. Uh, but all the stuff that we talked about in the last hour and a half, it tells Tiny how to bring this shit up. Um, you know, like all the other stuff you guys are building, you know, like people are not, no one's going to remember about a stupid video on YouTube. Welcome back to the King Value Radio Network. I'm your host, Sandy. And I'm your other host, Carl. Sandy, we are getting loads of calls today about the fresh new one dollar double crispy or just simply the apple of the nft world don't you want a piece of that don't you want to if i'm being honest this whole thing feels like a black mirror episode if it's all true then this really is the biggest troll in the history of the internet Hundreds of celebrities would have been fooled into promoting something that has disgusting imagery connected to it. Not only that, but million dollar brands would have unknowingly risked their stock price plummeting, and regular buyers wouldn't have known the true meaning behind what lies in their wallet. But none of these consequences will ever happen, because it's impossible to prove this conspiracy theory without the founders coming out and saying it's real. And even if Bored Ape Yacht Club started out with these crazy intentions to troll the world, it's safe to say that now that they are a multi-billion dollar brand, there are just too many people involved for the creators to have their hand in every part of the business. It's become commercialized, and it's become what they might have set out to make fun of. So what do I think? To put it bluntly, I'm genuinely not sure, and someone who believes in the theory would likely say, well, that's how it's been designed. It's been designed so that you will never 100% know. And to them I'd say, yeah, you're right. But it doesn't change the facts that I'm no longer comfortable saying that I think Bored Ape Yacht Club is actually Bored Ape Nazi Club. I do not think that the founders are actual neo-Nazis or extreme racists. I think it's way more likely that they are a group of friends with extremely edgy and offensive dark humor that wanted to make the NFT world look stupid by making people buy things with disgusting undertones. This is in no way condoning their hypothetical actions, but I do think that it's important to clarify as there is a huge difference. Regardless of if we ever get an answer, 
It's one of the most insane internet theories I've ever heard. And even though I land directly in the middle of everyone's opinions, I still find myself wondering if everything really was intentional. I still find myself wondering if Bored Ape number 6969 is a coincidence. And I still find myself in disbelief over the potential of a $5 billion troll. If you want to support me and my bigger projects that I have planned in the future, please go over to patreon.com slash brandonfm. This video didn't have a sponsor, and hopefully by the end of the year, I'll never have to take a sponsorship again. My goal is to grow the Patreon so I don't have to take sponsorships and also launch something that will help me financially support my projects uh, later this year. Thank you to all the people who pledge money over there, it genuinely makes these videos possible. I've been working on a massive project launching later this year, and every single penny of the Patreon money goes into funding that project. I am going broke from funding this project, but uh, hopefully it will be worth it when it comes out. If you want to help out in other ways, please follow this Instagram account. It will become very important in the next coming months. Also, follow my Twitter. I don't really have a pitch why you should follow the Twitter. I post like once a month. Um, but if you follow it, I can message more people on there because people will take me more seriously. So yeah, Twitter, um, good, follow that. Yeah, that's everything. Patreon.com slash BrandonFM. Follow this Instagram account. Thank you again for watching this far and, uh, I'll see you soon. Wake up.